Hi guys and welcome to Just Driven. In today's video we're going to bring you guys up to speed on where we're at on these two icons sitting behind me. As you can see they are complete. We are really excited about the progress we've made on these two builds and we can't wait to share them all with you. So in this video we're going to just kind of fill you in and bring you up to date on where we're at. So stay tuned. I think you're going to like this one. God, these cars, I swear, I get giddy every time I'm in their presence. You guys could probably relate if you're into Fast and Furious and if you had any appreciation or respect for the movie. Can you believe 23 years ago? It's been 23 years, right? 23 years. And here we are today. So building these two cars, putting them back on the road, making them as exact as possible to what was seen in the movie was not an easy task. I just can't tell you, man, how long of a journey it's been, but how much of a pleasure and how much fun it's been putting these two cars together. It has not been cheap. It has been a small fortune and that's okay. You know, no regrets. That's my credo. No regrets. No regrets. Like not even a single letter. No regrets. So if you guys remember, if you hadn't seen the last video, you'll know that we had some damage. When this thing went out on an event, we ran into some challenges with the transporter, caused some damage to it. But go check out that last video of the graphics being removed. We ended up having to remove the side skirts and repaint the entire side of the car and install all new graphics. It is done. It looks amazing. I was concerned because this is not an easy color to match. You know, unfortunately, when you have a little bit of damage, you end up having to paint pretty much the entire side when you have multi-stage paint going on a car. So that's exactly what we did. It came out amazing. Joe once again killed it. As you can see, we made all the repairs to the side skirts. Did have to actually do some repair damage to the door edge. And while we were at it, we decided, okay, it's time to put the larger decals, the correct size decals on the back of the car. So the Gretti and the DT decals are actually larger than what was on it previously. Uh, we did add the uh, APR decal on the wing. Those were missing. Fortunately, I have another set of these. I'm going to actually move them back a little bit Farther, so I still have that to do. You'll notice that they're in a little bit of an angle, but that's exactly how the movie car was. So again, our goal on this car was to make it as exact as what was seen in the movie. In fact, I don't know if you guys recall, but during the entire build series on the Supra, we had Craig Lieberman helping us out immensely. He owned the original hero car. And so what we did was we built it to look exactly like Craig's car. Although he made some changes to his car after filming and the graphics changed slightly. He added some different things to it. It changed his headlights and, and we went back to what was seen in the movie. We went with the chrome headlights, not the black headlights. We kept the graphics on the bottom black. I believe he moved his to silver. And so we made those changes and stuff there. We still haven't added the amps. And I don't know that we're going to go in that direction because quite frankly, we never saw the stereo equipment in the actual movie car. In our early building of this car, you'll remember it had a blue steering wheel because that's exactly what Craig's car had. Nowhere in the movie did you see a blue steering wheel. Uh, it was always a black steering wheel. So we took the blue steering wheel, had it rewrapped in black Alcantara uh, so it actually matched what you guys saw in the movie. And so here we are, man. I just, I'm so stoked that this thing is looking the way it does. And as you guys know, we went crazy. We didn't just restore this car to look exactly like the movie car. Whatever we could find from Toyota, we bought new. Headlights are new. 
All the rubber moldings are new. All the weather stripping is new. Even the quarter windows are new, all original Toyota. We even put a brand new Toyota dash in it because the dash that was in this car was slightly warped. We really went the extra mile on this thing, replacing everything. So it is truly a fully restored car. Even going to the extreme of making it look exactly like Craig's car under the hood or as close as we could without, you know, getting too, too carried away. But I mean, look at this thing, man. We did actually paint the engine bay to match the car. I know a lot of people said, oh, well, wasn't Craig's engine bay black? Yes, it was. Craig even admits that he would have probably painted it to match if he had more time. This and, you know, so much better than what my car was because we're fixing all the stuff that I really hated about the car. I absolutely love the way this car came out. It is an absolute pleasure to drive. Really fun car, and it just looks so amazing. Back in its glory of looking like the movie car. You know, and then we get to the Toretto Charger. The Toretto Charger, the monster. When we set out to do this, I wanted to build a car that looked as close as possible to the original movie car. In the movie, there was the use of an engine that was placed in its engine bay to make it look as if that was the motor that was being used in the movie. You know, an Enderly buzzard catcher is much bigger than what you see in the later Toretto Chargers. This is actually a buzzard catcher. I believe those were called bird catchers, a little smaller. We did everything we could to make it look as real and as authentic as possible. And of course, it has to work. We didn't want to put a fake blower and buzzard catcher on it and have it not be functional. So this has been a really interesting build, a really expensive build. You know, Hawaii Racing actually took a Bill Mitchell aluminum block 572 Hemi. Longevity was an important thing for us. We wanted to share this car with you as much as possible. And so we kind of went that extra mile. We actually used a gear vendor product that actually added additional three speeds to the 727 automatic that made it into a six speed. So it can travel down the freeway without just screaming we haven't gotten to the point where we've taken it on the freeway yet. I'll get into that in a second. We have moved it around. We're seating the brakes right now. Let's just look at it for a minute. I mean, come on, guys. I just freaking love this car. So with all that being said, Adrian took a lot of time and effort into making this hood look it's just a piece of art. The work that went into building this hood so that it would clear the throttle and the catcher, it's unreal. All the structural resupporting of this hood to make it functional. This is an actual turn signal hood. Those turn signals actually work that are recessed into the hood. These 
electric doors actually work. The reason why the headlights are exposed is because pretty much throughout the entire movie that this car was seen, the first movie, these headlight doors were always open. Just a couple things that we went over in the original build series of this car. We added air conditioning. It's got vintage AC. If you go back and look at the original video of the build of this car, you'll know that it's got an electronic AC uh, hybrid unit tucked behind this headlight assembly so it's not taking any power away from the, the motor. A lot of people are wondering if it's got power steering. It actually has a power steering column. It's an electric power steering column. We didn't want to add a power steering unit as an, an additional pulley that takes away from the horsepower. So we diverted that to the column. So it does actually have electric steering column. It has manual brakes, which was something that we talked about. And I'll be honest with you, at some point we talked about removing the automatic and putting a manual transmission in this. And if you guys are wondering why, it's because of braking. You know, this car truly is a monster. There's such a surge that goes on with this kind of gasser setup that you're constantly applying the brakes. You know, especially if you're driving it in a public arena where you're in traffic, you're, you're pushing the brakes a lot. And you know, there are some actual videos of people losing their brakes and just destroying their cars, not to mention the cars they're colliding into. We were worried about that and I wanted a backup. So we went with Chase Bays and we added a hydraulic handbrake that provides an additional set of calipers that will apply the rear brakes. Some people call them steering brakes. They're used in drifting. We decided to go that route and that's something that Adrian built into the car. And you'll notice that in the back, you'll see two calipers on the back as opposed to one. Uh, so I feel confident now that we have a lot more braking backup, if you will. You'll notice that all this looks very similar to what you saw in the original movie. Obviously the distributors in the different location because this is an aluminum block 572 Hemi. It's not the original gasser Hemi where the distributor I believe was in the rear. These, uh, these guys are a bit too big. Um, we've got smaller ones that we're gonna install. These were the ones that you saw in the actual garage scene. It's this size. We're just gonna have to make an adapter. These will get replaced with the smaller ones. Our plan is, is to put some more miles on this car, but we have to quiet it down a little bit. And what we've decided to do is go with a electronic valve exhaust. So it's gonna actually have a muffler and at a flip of a switch, the valve will trip and it will bypass the exhaust and it'll go to the loud, obnoxious sound that it makes presently. That's really the last thing we're gonna do. Part of the reason why we haven't taken it out and put it on the road is we still are waiting for our registration to come through, which isn't a problem because it's a 1970, so there's no emission requirements or anything like that. But I just didn't want everyone's car alarm to go off and piss everyone off. <laughs> Not to mention the fact that it's so loud, man. You, you really can't even hear yourself think when you're standing next to the car or in traffic where it's echoing off the cars next to you. So as a courtesy to all the people that don't necessarily have an appreciation for this kind of build, we just wanted to be in a situation where we're not having everyone, you know, the old man shaking his cane at us. So that's the next thing we're gonna do on this car. Moving forward, we just wanna share them with you guys. And look at this absolute stunning car. One of my favorite cars of all time. I just absolutely love this thing. I mean, come on. Can you believe a B-body closes that nice? Unbelievable. Got to, you know. Love this car. Absolutely love it. Every aspect of it.
having the ability to take our own special liberties, since there wasn't a lot of the dashboard being shown on this car, I really, really loved the way the dashboard came out. You know, Richard over at uh, B-Side Fabrication, now known as What Works. Corsa, uh, since the dashboard wasn't seen much in the actual movie and little bits and pieces of it were seen, you know, I think Richard really knocked it out of the park. I actually drew up some drawings. He did a really good job of turning my literal crayon drawings into this masterpiece. Some people were a little disappointed that they saw a center console in here because I guess in one scene, all you saw was the shifter. I didn't, it, what, whatever, you know, I love the way it came out. I love the idea of it having the center console. The entire back package tray and rear seat delete, in my opinion, just looks absolutely amazing. Not to mention the fact that this roll cage is very structural. One of the things we realized is after we got the roll cage installed and fitted, the rear windows couldn't roll up and down because of the actual handle was getting in the way. At one point, we thought about just putting power windows on, on all four windows. And then we decided, now nah, let's just leave it a manual roll up. Then after, of course, getting the cage installed, we tried actually rolling the rear windows down and we couldn't. Come here, check this out. Adrian did an amazing job. He retrofitted electric motors to the rear windows and added some switches that kind of look the part for this uh, dashboard. And it's these guys right here, just two toggle switches that actually operate the rear windows. And now we don't have to worry about not being able to roll the windows down, which is kind of cool. Front windows are actual manual. They still work as a traditional window should. When the lights are on, by the way, you have all the dash lights. There is some suspension work, as we've talked about previously, that prevents this thing from twisting too much. And yes, it does move. You could feel this car wanting to, to get a little twisty on you. And hopefully we're gonna share that with you guys soon. I am not ready to mash down on the skinny pedal on the right just yet because I really wanna see the brakes a little bit more. I wanna feel absolutely confident that this thing's gonna stop, hopefully better than it goes. <laughs> Without getting into a bunch of details, we have other Mark IVs here, and we do have some plans of building some other cars. We like building stuff. Uh, I mean, what you don't see to your immediate right, which you're not gonna actually get to see today, is a very special Lamborghini and a very interesting build. A lot of projects still in the works. We have our S2000 build that we've got the last of our parts. Now we're just waiting for the engine to get sorted out and figure out what direction we're gonna go in our motor build. We have our Ferrari 288. We have countless other projects that we got parts literally sitting on a shelf and we're just waiting to get hands on them. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited, man. I'm, I'm really excited about these cars. And guys, give me your take on how you would like to see these cars used on our channel. You know, there's been a lot of comments about, oh, you should take it back to San Pedro where they did the railroad race scene. And you know, that's been done so many times with other people. We wanna do something a little special with these cars. Yes, we could go to the Toretto house and piss off that entire neighborhood. And let's face it, everybody goes there to take pictures. And we don't wanna do that. We don't wanna do what's been done many times. You know, we wanna do something different. You guys are amazing. You're why we're here. We love to do these kind of builds. 
We absolutely enjoy every aspect of these builds. And we're hoping that at some point we can get to the point where we have enough followers and enough subscribers that help pay for some of these builds. I know a lot of times we don't say that, but you know, this is the YouTube game. You know, as you know, we have a giveaway in the works that all-wheel drive Toyota Celica Turbo, which is gonna be a really fun car to see get built. And uh, one of you guys are gonna own it. We are gonna do a build in 10 possibly, or a build in, I don't know, 30, because there's so much work that went into this car. Like we did on this car, this car I believe is what, close to five million? That's insane, so thank you. Okay guys, so that is gonna be a wrap for this video. Thank you so much for staying tuned and we really appreciate all of you guys that have subscribed to our channel. Thank you guys, you guys are amazing. Go back and take a look at our videos. We do respond to all of your comments, so please leave us one. Tell us if you think we're crazy. Tell us if you think we should build something different. Tell us what you think about us being in this Fast and Furious side because, you know, we do want to look at some other options. Love to hear from you guys what you'd like to see us build. So thank you. We'll see you next time.